How did I get in this room? Just want to make sure we have the the name of the podcast. What right. a process! This we should was. be professionals at this point. We are. First of all, this room is the most professional room at this point in time. The uh, prep time is comparable to my makeup time. My makeup prep. Yeah, that's why we've been so here for three hours. So we've been hours. here for a couple you guys, hours. You guys don't even know how long it takes to do this with Margo. But <laughs> all right, so here we are. So um, we have a, an incredible interview that we're going to share with uh, the listeners, with the viewers here in just a couple of minutes. And Margo, as always, locked down the talent. We're going to talk to Tom Chapman of yes. New Order, bass yes. player for New Order. Yes. How did you even connect with Tom Chapman? Tom and I have a dear mutual friend who introduced us and actually not to queue up transparent, but that is, you know, how we know some of these folks. I gifted Tom. It took 30 <laughs> seconds for the transparent sunglasses Look, uh, I, plug. We're shooting on a Monday. I put makeup on. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk company? about my brand. Sure. And a friend of mine pinged and said, hey, we're going to be in town. Do you want to come to the show? And I was actually skiing with my family at the time, so I couldn't join. But I said, I would love to gift them some shades. And so, of course, uh, the viewers might not know yet, but I do tend to go a little bit overboard, just a tad. Yeah. And so we gifted New Order a couple of pairs of shades. And they started shades. wearing them. And look. And I started seeing all the photographs. I see the photos. I am shameless <laughs> about uh, this. I've been you a fan shameless. of New Order for <laughs> shameless. Uh, but I've been a fan of New Order uh, since I could create playlists on Napster and my iPods and That's such. Going way and back. so it, we're going, we're dating me. I'm actually quite young. <laughs> I'm going to pause for a bit. Okay, pause. Pause on that. But yeah, so Tom, um, it was such an honor to have him rocking our shades. And then when we started this incredible podcast that's just blowing up as we speak, um, he was one of the first guys I approached to interview because I just am such a fan of his music and his talent. He's also part of Sea Fever Band. Uh, which, which he is talks band about in the interview, and you guys are going to mm -hmm. hear it here in just a, in just a few seconds. Uh, but yeah, so, and uh, we talked about this, I, and I was talking to my good friend uh, from uh, Cactus Music, Quinn Bishop, who said, in 1983, what they did was, which was so brilliant, was New Order, as a promotion, sent every club they could think of in the world, they sent that free 12-inch of Blue Monday. And I think to this day, it's still the best-selling club 12-inch of all time. Did you know, I didn't get to ask uh, Tom this uh, in our interview, so I'll, I'll share it with the viewers, but I didn't realize that Blue Monday's lyrics were about talking about uh, housewives who had just received um, washing machines. <laughs> I did no, not it's, know that. Okay. It's a true fact. So I wanted to know the, the symbolism of the lyrics. We never talked about that, though, in the interview. I know. No, I'm sharing That's part this. Two. Look, That's this, part two. I'm sharing this for the first time. Yeah. But it's a fact that when I was doing my research, it's, it's talking about how housewives finally had this assistant to help clean the home. Okay. And how ironic that it's, you know, a Monday. They probably had a ton of laundry piled up. As we all do. As we all do. Anyway, we're, 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 we're going to cut to Margo, some other things. Margo has notes. Can you read this? Yeah, I can read. This so, alien handwriting? I, additionally, um, in my research, I did uh, talk to Tom about one of my favorite um, quotes that one of his interviewers described the band as, and that they're defined not by what they do, but what they didn't do. And I totally dig that. I get that. Yeah. There weren't screaming guitar solos. It was at times kind of minimalistic, uh, but still had this kind of driving beat. And, um, you know, I mean, they were coming out of the, I mean, there was so many things happening in that scene. You know, you had goth and punk and all this kind of stuff, you know, and New Wave was very synthy and you had new romantics and all that kind of stuff. But like who is still standing today who is still touring and selling out arenas it's new order it is yeah it, i agree so that's a testament i'm still to the trailing music tom and how, and how important it, and and you know the cure you know and maybe a, another band somewhere that we're forgetting but yeah i think that's the cult I, and I, such yeah. but you know going back to the the things that they're defined by things that they don't do um one of the 
one of the comments or responses from the, one of the current band members when the person inter interviewing them proposed that question or that comment, he said, yeah, exactly. So a lot of people, when they go to a concert, they want the encore, right? You know, you think the concert's over and you, you know that there's one song that you've waited and waited to hear them play and they don't play or did not play an encore unless the crowd was bunk. They were like, oh, we're only gonna make the crowd stay if we don't like them. They, they're just, they were very ironic and I just, I dig that. I'm gonna share something with you and oh, you, you don't know this. What, do I, what don't I, I know about you? I never stay for the encore. Oh, because of parking? Because of parking. I am <laughs> going to leave in, when I can feel like they're getting to the last couple of songs, I am out the door. 100% I agree. Because um, I've seen enough shows yeah. and I respect anybody, especially if you're, maybe you're like, you know, younger or whatever and you just, you just started going to shows or, or you're still in that part of your life where you want to be there and hear every single song and, and post about it on social media. That was years ago for me. So I am out the door. Austin City Limits is a perfect example. And I don't care. You could associate this to Lollapalooza, Coachella, mm -hmm. whatever. If you wait to the last minute, this is what's going to happen. You are going to be in a line. And that line is going to be two hours long. You're going to feel like and you're suddenly there's no alcohol. <laughs> there are no bathrooms. You're in a line. It is the most miserable thing in the world. So pro tip kids, leave three quarters of the way through the show and then wait for somebody to post the video of the encore on YouTube. And I love this for you. Drop this microphone right now. I <laughs> Mic drop and there you go. But I'm going to um, echo your sentiments on the parking, but I don't want to queue up another guest who will be joining us at some point soon. That's all about the parking. But I, it's, it is all about the parking. And I just recently, right. I don't deal with parking. Ruben. Yeah. Now, I know the story you're going to tell, but you, you need to save that. I'm saving it. Because that's gold. I also have secrets. All right. So without further ado... Uh, I think we should get to the top, Tom Chapman interview. Let's get to Are you Tom, ready? Are you ready? Yep. Here you go. Tom Chapman from New Order. Well, um, one thing that I adore about you other than your music, Tom, is your eyewear. All right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have come across uh, your sunglasses and I wear them a lot. I like them a lot. I'm a big fan of them. Um, should I tell the story how, how I came across your glasses? Oh, please do, because I love a shameless plug about my brand. Really, I'm, <laughs> really. So I'm we, have a mutual, we have a mutual friend called um, Orion Williams. Uh, if uh, your listeners don't know who he is, he's a, he's a film producer who did uh, an amazing film called Control about the band Joy Division. Um, that I recommend you watch if you haven't seen it. And um, we were playing in Houston. And we came backstage and uh, there seemed to be loads of boxes that Orion uh, had brought for us. And we, we, we were a bit puzzled by it. Like, well, what's this, Orion? Said, well, my friend sort of makes sunglasses and uh, she's giving you loads of, uh, loads of models to try. So, um, yeah, we tried them and they were brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. I fell in love with them straight away and um, I've been wearing them ever since. I love them. So, yes. That's, yeah. That's, I'm so flattered by that, uh, Tom. It's true. They're very cool. They're cool. <laughs> uh, and I, well, I, I love them. that you were um, kind of befuddled because most people that know me um, understand I do tend to go a little bit overboard. So when I, when I heard that you were in town, you know, it wasn't just a pair or two. I think there's like a, a 15 pairs or so but you guys have a large band um and i wanted each of you to find a pair that you enjoyed so i'm so thrilled it's just such an honor to have you um thank you embrace my little tiny brand and then you know th then we do have this podcast ruben's like why does she all all she does is talk about <laughs> no well, that's fine that's what we're here for I'm, but I'm, uh, I'm fine with that yeah you know when i was in paris for paris fashion week Yes. And as well, uh, 
it, that was such a bummer because I missed you by a day. A That's right. Yeah, we just done the gig, which was actually the best gig on the tour. Don't say that. You're gonna make me cry. Well, I'm gonna cry. Fun, There's a tear <laughs> budding in in my eye right now. <laughs> so yeah. So Tom, I want to ask because uh, and and please excuse me if you've you've had to field this question a thousand times, uh, but I think our listeners would be interested in it. Sure. Uh, what was it like coming into as a member of one of these amazing legacy genre defining bands? Well, at first it was very surreal. It took me it, it took me quite a while to realize that I was in a new order. I'd, I'd previously worked with Bernard Sumner and Phil Cunningham and Stephen Morris in a band called Bad Lieutenant. So uh, it was a natural progression, if you'd like, so to go from Bad Lieutenant to to being in, with uh, New Order. But I'd never played sort of stadiums or big festivals nor had I traveled around the world so it was a big 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 moment for me as a musician and it meant a lot um, especially for all the sort of hard work I put in in the early years and the struggles it all seemed worth it and uh, yeah I was I was happy I'd sort of finally reached my goal as a musician of where I wanted to be um, and to work with these musical icons as well is, is a big deal for me and still to this day. They're very influential um, uh, and, and inspiring uh, artists. Uh, so I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm humble and I'm blessed. And, um, I'm, I'm pleased that this journey is still uh, going on and uh, we're experiencing still a lot of amazing uh things as a as a artist and um as a group as well so no I, I love it I love it uh I did uh in a little bit of research Tom I yeah. found a couple of adjectives that I thought um as from a fan perspective do describe you guys um dark <laughs> post punk yeah pioneering the three p's and so I was curious if you had an opinion on how you what you think of those adjectives what is that are, are those adjectives describing you accurately and is that why you are uh, able to remain so relevant i i think uh new order i i, I pioneers with the uh, with the uh, what maybe i would say the equipment they used in the, maybe in the early 80s and the way they used it and the, the music they produced with it because I, I think you've got to remember, not a lot of artists were were able to to use the, the, those those pieces of equipment and sort of come up with inno innovative music. So I think it's totally justified. Mm -hmm. And then, really, it's the sheer talent and the music that's come out throughout all these years that sort of justifies the the success of the bands and the continuity of the the success, which is really really hard to achieve in this day and age in music you know to stay in the uh, relevant for that long is um, is special but it's it's justified in their case because um, yeah they're extremely talented musicians yeah as i said yeah so i hope they're not listening to me because i'd feel uncomfortable saying that in front of them, but <laughs> well, it's true it's extremely true. talented <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, you know, once this actually goes up, I mean, you know, sky's the limit. It's it's going to have worldwide reach, Tom. So <laughs> every, every, right. every, Wait, everybody and, uh, it. Uh, speaking of that, though, Tom, you're I don't believe that you're following us yet on our Instagram. And so <laughs> you're going to need to I do think that I am. because we are just going to blow up new order and you <laughs> you'll be our 10th follower. You will be our 10th follower. Get us there, please. <laughs> You'll we, be my ninth. It's okay, no problem. Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, uh, uh, you know, and I'm, I know you've, you've, you, you're a producer as well. Um, and again, talking about how influential New Order is, uh, in the past ten years or so, I, I feel I, I hear all these elements in these in brand new bands or, or newer bands that are, um, I'm not going to say borrowing but you can tell that they were influenced by the new orders the smiths you know that, that yeah. 
80s sound that just completely changed everything uh does do, do you have the same reaction when you hear i mean i just i just saw foals live and there's a couple of songs off of the new album that have this like ringing kind of like duran duran vibe right in your face so I, yeah I, I was wondering how you how you react to that when you when you hear these bands that obviously love that music so much it, it manifests in their own songs I think it's great. I think it's uh, it's the biggest compliment you can pay to to an artist when you you're trying to emulate their their music or trying to replicate the sound or so uh, you're inspired by the sound and it, it sort of uh, makes you want to create something new. Um, I, I I hear loads of groups uh, like that and you think oh I, I can hear where they're coming from. You know bands like Nation of Language from New York or Future Islands is another band, but they're also bringing a different element to it and taking it somewhere else. And I think that's the beauty of music where you can take influences as long as you're trying to make something uh, different and fresh out of it. I think that's the most important thing. And these bands do. So, uh, but it's, um, I think it's a testament to to the talent of, uh, of, of New Order to hear these bands still to this day sort of being influenced by them and trying to sort of um, replicate the sound or sort of, um, not replicate, but maybe be inspired by the sound, should I say. You know? One, that's just something that I love about, about you guys is you kind of refuse to um, play. I think, I think, yeah, I think New Order, I've, I've always broken rules and wanted to sort of really um, stand out of the box if you like and sort of take risks and maybe not sort of do uh, things in a conform way. Uh, I can think of their sort of performance on top of the pops in the 80s uh, when they were sort of promoting Blue Monday and they insisted to play live uh, on the show and the show wasn't geared up to sort of uh, have bands playing live. Every artist was miming but they refused to do that um as a result of that they, they managed to play live but it was so wasn't their best performance shall we say so the record was going down instead of going up and I, I i love that i just think that's really punk and that sums them up and that was their attitude they just wanted to do something different um a lot of people well i don't I know i'd like to see more of that in, in artists nowadays but um you know that that was the way like you said, a lot of the things they didn't do sort of made uh, made them be appreciated by their audiences, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. You know, and still to this day, I think we we still do that a lot um, with our approach to to shows or writing music. You know, you you talked about you talked about what it was uh, what it was like suddenly touring the world and playing stadiums. Um, where do you, as an artist, where are you most, uh, where are you most comfortable? Would that be in the studio or playing out live or maybe just songwriting? Where, where do you, where's your, where's that happy place for you? It, it's everything. I love, I love being in the studio. I'm a, I'm a songwriter myself and producer, as you said. So I love being in the studio, in my studio, writing music, um, which I do on a daily basis. I, I have this routine where I just sort of, get up and, and go to my studio and and tinkle as we say in English uh, to try and sort of find ideas and um, so I love I love writing music and and producing my music and I produce other artists but um, I think part of a, a, being a musician is also appreciating uh, traveling touring uh, experiencing new cultures meeting new people so I love I love that side of it too. I love I love being on the road. I love doing shows. I love going on stage. Um, yeah, it's my life uh, as an artist, and I love it. But um, I was also going to say I have my own band, which is a little band as well, and uh, nowhere near on the scale of uh, a new order called Sea Fever. And yes. I do a lot of little club shows with with uh, with my band and. It usually involves touring in a little van and uh, going up and down the country, and I and I, I enjoy, I enjoy doing that too. You know, it's not just the big gigs; it's just uh, it's my life, and that's what I enjoy doing. So, and it's totally sort of on different levels, if you know what I mean. It's 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 up there and down there. So, um, 
it's, I'm just, I, I, I love it. I love it. It's my life. But I'm, I'm curious, because didn't you start Sea Fever in 2020? So that was during the pandemic, I guess. Yes. Well, we, we started just before that. And yeah, it, in the early days, we were calling ourselves a, a lockdown band, which was so complicated. So a lot of work was done remotely with the other members of the band. And we weren't able to get together or write in the same room, which sort of uh, was was had its sort of complexities but we managed to get there and uh um yeah so the early years were difficult with that man but we're still you know we're still sort of working and uh the band's growing which is great and but it takes time so you've got to roll with it you know so that's it i like the name sea fever thank you thank you it is a good name and band names are hard because pretty much all of the good band names are gone so, You're telling me, right? It took, <laughs> us, it took us a month to come up with something half decent. It's like website. I think it's your own.com. Oh, it was, it was a nightmare. A nightmare. It's yeah. difficult. But anyway. So, uh, Tom, um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what are you excited about coming up, you know, as far as uh, musical projects or maybe something new, a new order has working on? Yeah, so I, well, I'll start with my band Sea Fever. We have a new album coming out this year that we've just finished. So it should be out in September this year, which we're really excited about. Uh, I have a few shows with them this year as well coming up. And then we've got a very big show. Uh, well, two shows coming up with a new order this summer in August. We're playing at uh, Widdenshaw Park, which is a big park in Manchester, uh, with Johnny Marr supporting us and Royce and Murphy. So it's going to be a great show. We're really looking forward to that. And um, there might be even more plans of touring when you order at the end of the year, but I'm not sure what's going to happen yet. But at the moment, that's that's all we've got in the, in the calendar and possibly sort of um, write more material, just sort of keep on working. All right. So I don't know about you, but it was everything I could do not to nerd out because I wanted to ask all sorts of questions like what kind of bass are you playing? You know, what what are your amplifiers on stage? You know, are you using modelers? Super nerdy. But uh, that interview, like a lot of the interviews we've done and they're already in the can and people are going to get to see them. I mean, it could have gone on for an hour. It definitely, well, yes, definitely could have gone on for a long time. And you did nerd out a bit. You know, we we tried to not make you look like the nerd that you are, but that's why Super we're nerd. a great team we is great we're team. both music fans and we both had the opportunity to share with Tom, you know, how we remember our first New Order experience. Mine was in a club. Yours was like... In a club? Uh, you know, in they a were club all as clubs. well. All clubs. I've never seen them. I've never seen that band perform live. I'm try as we mentioned, I trailed him in Paris. I my flight was delayed. I literally DM'd Tom. I was like, how is this happening? I missed you in Houston. I have to fly all the way to Europe. And then of course he says, you know, his, that was his best gig and in a British accent. There we're could gonna, not be anything worse. We're gonna end up seeing seeing them in like Tulsa. I know. Like one day. <laughs> we're gonna you know, go to like, like Midland. Houston has better restaurants. Tom, come Houston, back. Houston, Tom. Houston has better better restaurants. All right. So, you know, and what we're going to try to do with the podcast is, uh, you know, talk to these interesting people in music or whatever, in, you know, whatever scene, area, genre they're in, and then share it with you guys. Um, if you had a wish list, right? Obviously, New Order, but I always go back to those kind of like new wave bands. We talked about Culture Club a little bit earlier. Do you have like a, a band back then that you never saw? And if you had a chance to see them, who would that be? Okay. Um, what first comes to mind, I'm just, this is off the cuff. Um, Aha, take on me. Oh. That's one of my favorite videos. Um, it's a great video. And do you know, they, they had like multiple hits in Europe, but that was their only U.S. hit. Yeah. And they, 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 it's a great album. And I don't think anybody that just saw the video and just liked the one song, because back then I think people still bought like singles. <laughs> right. You know, the little 45 or whatever, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but... But I like take on me. Yeah. Take on. I yeah. Never, never. It was very Harry Styles. Look, Ruben is the musician in our duo. And so if I ever try to sing, we need just to cut. 
I cut. can't sing. Yeah, you do. When we first, sh- when we shot our first attempt at a pilot, this is like the 9,000th. We'll see how it goes. Did I Hopefully, sing? you guys listen more. Yeah. But you sa- you sang some sort of solos. It was a little bit nerding out. No there. one wants to hear that. No, let's no one, not. No one wants to hear that. What, anyway, would, what, so for what me, band would you. So for me, so back in the day, because, you know, I mean, compared to me, Mark, uh, <laughs> I was Margaret, I almost said your daughter, uh, compared to me, uh, you know, Margot is is still just kind of like almost almost a little kid. Uh, but you know, I saw I old enough to remember seeing a lot of those bands. I saw Squeeze with a flock of seagulls and oh. Joaquin Carrasco, who was kind of like regionally popular. He he became he he was a thing on MTV for a little while because he did this joking Carrasco Christmas thing and for whatever reason they loved him but he never really made anything of himself other than and I'm not downplaying it because you know I saw him live and he was a great entertainer but you know seeing bands like that in relatively small theaters or whatever IRL and so real cool. life yeah in real life was so cool yeah but I missed a lot of bands too it's like one of my best friends saw the Smiths when they came through. That would be killer, saw yeah. Devo. Yeah. It, you know, and it's like, where was I when all these shit? He saw The Clash, oh. for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, anyway, so. Life yeah. changing. Maybe we'll get that time machine and we can go back. We're, Culture I, Club. I, Culture I think, Club. I think the I both of us would love to see that. Miss Me Blind is, it's like a go-to for me. Yeah. I love, I love, love, love that song. Um but yeah, going back to New Order, uh, I love Bizarre Love Triangle. Is it, it is and will always be the the number one on my playlist. It's almost like a superstition, perhaps. But those lyrics are on point, and there is not you can't count on two hands how many times I told Tom how obsessed I am with that song. Um, He'd attest I, to it right I now. I will tell you my favorite New Order song, and if you. It's one of those songs that you, you've you heard, but you didn't know this was the title of it. Oh. Love Vigilantes. Oh, it's almost... Well, it's, on the, it's, on the, it's on the train spotting soundtrack. I love that. Kevin Spacey, I'm obsessed with train spotting. Was, was he in that? No. But I'm thinking Vigilante is he making me think of Taylor it. Swift. Let's just go. Let's just go with Kevin Spacey <laughs> should have been in train spotting. Was, wait, it wasn't Kevin Spacey. It was... Uh, Okay, don't ask us. Look, we will never know that. This is why we love you. But um, vigilante is a great uh, word and a a song title because, look, it's almost like New Order was onto something early and then Taylor Swift took that because vigilante shit is one of her hits in Taylor's new version. You, You just got us flagged on YouTube. Okay. Get we're getting there now. <laughs> if somebody flags us, we know we have made it. And you just get, drop the S bomb. We we um, We love Taylor. We love Tay Tay. There's we, that's a concert we should go to. Rolling Stones is coming. Um there's so many upcoming interviews uh and concerts where Ruben and I will try and use this podcast to sneak in backstage and so far we're doing great. We are doing great. And if we can get into the Rolling Stones or Taylor Swift, I will, I, will, I will buy you dinner if you can swing that. All right, guys. So here's the deal. Uh, you know, obviously, keep it tuned to the podcast. We're going to have more episodes for you, and hopefully, you guys will kind of hang out with us and uh, as we move through this. So, hope you love this one. Send us comments. Send us the DMs, and uh, look for uh, hopefully the next episode very soon. Right? Absolutely. Peace. We're out of here. Peace.